Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Hello everyone and welcome to the 59th episode of Death Row Executions. Today's story is on Mark Anthony Stroman, who was executed in 2011. I know what affected my life here September 11th. I'll never forget it. A lot of hate and anger towards uh, the Arab world. Seeing the images of people jumping off the buildings, people trapping on planes, Flight 93, and my country was attacked. So I kind of, I took it personal. This country was founded on Christianity, not this Muslim garbage. I'd run a couple of people off the road. Well, there was a lot of us out there haunting Arabs. Mark Anthony Stroman was born on October 13, 1969 in Dallas, Texas. As a child, it has been documented that his mother started a relationship with a man after his father left, and this new man used to abuse Mark. Psychologically, he was affected and began to get in trouble and run the streets at an early age. Starting at the age of nine, he quickly went from stealing bicycles to cars. He would frequently run away from home and did not do well in school. At this young age, he also started using drugs, which turned into him selling drugs as well. He was in and out of the Collin County Juvenile Detention Center, but always violated his probation and never completed any programs to help with his early drug addiction or behavior rehabilitation. Workers at the detention center said Mark was very troubled and was in need of counseling but did not get the proper support he needed. Mark dropped out of school in the eighth grade and by age 12, he was now in possession of guns and was involved in an armed robbery. He ended up getting married and having a child by the young age of 15 and just a year later, he was arrested for being in possession of an illegal switchblade knife. In Texas, it was illegal to be in possession of brass knuckles, so at the age of 20, he was arrested again because he had a pair on him. He eventually joined the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas and began getting tattoos that promoted his love for Nazis and the KKK. His life of crime continued and he ended up burglarizing a man's home, stealing a lot of valuable possessions. He even stole checks and was able to take all of the money out of the victim's bank account. Before getting caught, he robbed another victim and he was sentenced to a total of four years for both crimes after he got caught. For unknown reasons, he was released from prison early, and in the same month but the following year, November 6, 1990, Mark went to an auto parts store, stole a woman's purse, and then used her credit card to buy whatever he wanted. He was eventually arrested for this crime and sentenced to eight years for the robbery. He was also charged with two more eight-year sentences for credit card abuse. The judge, however, allowed him to serve time concurrently for each sentence. On July 14, 2001, not too soon after being released from prison, he went back to his old ways and was caught with a handgun while inside of a liquor store. Even though he was charged with being in possession of a firearm as a felon and second-time offender, he was able to get out on bond just a couple of days later on July 16, 2001. Months go by and what was seemingly a normal day in America changed the lives of many in a split second. It was September 11, 2001 when planes took down the World Trade Center. The cause of the attack was said to have been by Muslim terrorists, so it sparked a lot of fear, hate, and anger in many Americans. It was the precursor to a long war in the Middle East and many Muslims who lived their lives in America and did not share the beliefs and sentiments of Muslim terrorists were living in fear as well because the act of a few made people hate the whole religion. Although Islam is a religion and many races and people from different regions can practice Islam, many people now despised Arabs. One of those people who was filled with rage and hate was Mark Anthony Stroman, a self-proclaimed Christian and member of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. 
he now felt it was his duty as an American to rid the country of Arabs and Muslims. His sister died in the attacks on the Twin Towers, and he said that killing Arabs would be considered patriotic and a preventative measure he had to take into his own hands because the country did not do a good job in defending itself. He and his fellow brothers were on the lookout of Muslims, and he had admitted to killing eight people after September 11th, and the ninth victim was on September 15th, 2001. He was in Dallas, Texas at the time, and had taken a gun from someone he was living with without their permission. He then went into a store called Mom's Grocery that was owned by a Pakistani man by the name of Waqar Hassan. Waqar was grilling hamburgers at the time when Mark went up to him and shot him in the head. Mark left and he was able to get away with this murder. Less than a week later, on September 21, 2001, Mark attempted to kill yet another person he thought to be Arab. The victim was a Bengali man by the name of Reis Buyan who was working at his friend's gas station in Dallas, Texas. He was a former Air Force pilot who was working in a rough area in a store that was frequently robbed. He had even been held gunpoint before, but on this day, it changed his life forever. In his own words, he said, it was Friday around 12.30 in the afternoon. Business was slow. It was raining cats and dogs. The neighbor from the barber shop had come in and brought chips and drinks. Then there's a guy coming into the store with a hat and sunglasses and a bandana and a gun in his hand. I thought it was a robbery. I said, don't shoot me, please. Take all the money. He said, where are you from? He was four or five feet away from me. I felt cold air in my spine. I said, excuse me? It was a double barrel gun. I felt a million bee stings on my face at the time. Then I heard an explosion. I saw images of my parents, my siblings, and my fiance, and then a graveyard, and I thought, am I dying today? I looked down and I saw blood was pouring from my head. I placed both my hands on my head to get my brains in, and I screamed, Mom. I looked and he was still staring at me, and I thought he might shoot me again if I don't fall and he doesn't think I'm dead. The floor was getting wet with my blood. Then he left the store. Rice was injured, but only spent one day at the hospital due to not having insurance. He lost money, went in debt, and lost vision in one of his eyes. To this day, he still has 35 pellets lodged in his face, and he had to undergo multiple surgeries just to save his eye. Mark was able to get away with attempted murder, and police began an investigation of the shooting. Mark ended up obtaining more weapons and was intending to start a random shooting at a mall. Before doing so, on October 4, 2001, he went into a gas station in Mesquite, Texas, owned by a man by the name of Vasudev Patel. Vasudev was a Hindu Indian immigrant who owned the gas station and was attending the register when Mark walked in. Mark walked in with his pistol and immediately demanded that Vasudev open the cash register or he would be killed. Vasudev had a gun hidden under his cash register, but before he was able to grab hold of it, Mark shot him in the chest, causing him to collapse on the floor. While Vasudev lay there incapacitated, CCTV footage from the security cameras showed Mark trying hard to open the cash register and still demanding Vasudev open it. He eventually decided to leave but was not caught until the following day. While being locked up, he immediately reached out to different TV stations, communicating with everyone he spoke with that he would be known as a patriot. Although he did not kill any Arabs, he dubbed himself the Arab Slayer and wrote letters to friends saying the killings were revenge and that he was a special breed of American and should be the next mayor for what he did. Mark was indicted on November 15, 2001 in Dallas County for the murder of Vasudev Patel and attempted robbery. While on trial, he was aware that the family of his first victim, Waqar Hassan, was there and he made it known he hated them by flipping them off and making other obscene hand gestures at them. He was able to testify and in his own words he said, 
I cannot tell you that I am an innocent man. I am not asking you to feel sorry for me, and I won't hide the truth. He showed no remorse, and on April 2, 2002, Mark was found guilty of capital murder. Two days later, he was sentenced to death. While on death row, he was so full of pride that he began to write a collection of poems about how happy he was with the crimes he committed. There were approximately six appeals and petitions filed on Mark's behalf, but they were all denied by the Texas Board of Pardons and Parole, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, and the U.S. Supreme Court. Despite Mark's lack of remorse, one of his surviving victims, Rice Bouillon, forgave him and fought his hardest for Mark to be taken off of death row. He even hired lawyers to help with the fight. Something had changed when he went to Hajj, a pilgrimage to Mecca, and he asked God why his life was saved. He felt the answer was to prevent senseless violence. He then said, Instead of hating him, I saw him as a human being like me not just a killer. I saw him as a victim too, and I deeply felt by executing him, we would simply lose a human life without dealing with the root cause. Mark was made aware that he had the Muslim community supporting him, and something changed within him as well. After spending years on death row, he renounced his Aryan brotherhood and racist ways of thinking. In his own words, he said, I have the Islamic community joining in my legal defense, spearheaded by one very remarkable man named Reis Bouyan, who was a survivor of my hate. His deep Islamic beliefs have given him the strength to forgive the unforgivable. That is truly inspiring to me and should be an example for all of us. The hate has to stop. We are all in this world together. The two were not able to speak on the phone until July 20th, 2011, which was the day Mark was scheduled to die. They made peace with one another, and Race told him, I forgive you, and I do not hate you. Mark replied by saying, Thank you from my heart. I love you, bro. You touched my heart. I would have never expected this. Race finished the call by saying, You touched mine too. For Mark's last meal, he had a ham and cheese omelet with onions and tomatoes, fried potatoes, chicken fried steak, bacon, fried squash, fried okra, pork chops with eggs sunny side up, Dr. Pepper, and a pint of vanilla bluebell ice cream. During this time, he also found out that Race's lawyers lost their final appeal for a stay of execution. It was now time for his execution, and he made his final words. The Lord Jesus Christ be with me. I am at peace. Hate is going on in this world, and it has to stop. One second of hate will cause a lifetime of pain. Even though I lay on this gurney, seconds away from my death, I am at total peace. I'm still a proud American, Texas loud, Texas proud. God bless America. God bless everyone. Although all of his victim's family members forgave Mark, they did not attend his execution and instead had a policeman go in their honor. Mark died at approximately 9 p.m. that night. While Mark was being executed, his firstborn, 32-year-old Rob Stroman, was serving a 14-year prison sentence for robbery and was following in his father's footsteps. The last conversation he had with his father, he told him that he had to change. He was going down a dark path, and before he went to prison, he was in the hospital and received a visit from none other than Race Bouillon who wanted to check on him. Rob said that he was shocked to see Race and was surprised at how compassionate he was. He made it a vow that he was going to change his life around once he got out of prison. Race Bouillon quit his full-time job and opened up a nonprofit organization called World Without Hate. Thank you all for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. And before I go, I would like to give a big shout out to Sherlina, Lisa, Ella White, Mark Allen, and Sasha's Budget Gardening. Thank you all for becoming patrons on my Patreon.